Hi guys, it's Daniel here, and today we're going to do another problem involving pi, principle of inclusion and exclusion. Last week we uh, introduced the concept of pi, so this week let's do a slightly harder problem. This is from uh, problem 12 of 2011 Amy 2, so not that easy. Nine delegates, each three from different countries, randomly select chairs at a round table that seats nine people. Let the probability that each delegate sits next to at least one delegate from another country be m over n. And we want to find m plus n, so we want to find the probability that every delegate sits next to at least one delegate from another country. So when you first try to attack this problem directly, it seems uh, like a very bad case for Grash because uh, the probability that a delegate sits next to at least one delegate from another country, well, if that happens, then the rest of the delegates will also be affected. So in order to solve this problem, we might think about using pi. And as a general rule of using pi is to uh, consider the converse or consider the complement. In this case, instead of considering the probability that each delegate sits next to at least one delegate from another country, we want to find the probability that there exists at least one delegate that sits next to only people from his own country. So the keyword with using pi is at least one. When you see this keyword, it's kind of a hint that you should use pi. So in this case, we if we want to find the probability that at least one delegate sits next to only people from his own country, well, how does that happen? If this delegate is from A and he sits next to only people from his own country, this delegate must also be from country A and this delegate must also be from country A. In other words, these three delegates are consecutive seats from the same country. So we want this pattern to hold at least once. So in order to find the probability that this holds at least once, we will find the total number of ways to order the people and then have that as a numerator and have the number of ways for this to happen at least once be the, uh, sorry, the total number of ways be the denominator and the number of ways be the numerator. And then that will be our probability. So. First off, having the round table is kind of bad, and since this is a probability question, we might as well just assume that this top seat right here is, let's just say the head seat, so like, like it's special, it's number one. And then might as well like, I don't know, might as well just num number the rest of the seats as well while we're at it. It doesn't really matter, as long as we can have some sort of differentiation between rotating the table, it's okay. It makes counting a lot easier. So let's get rid of this A for now. Okay. So let's first find the no total number of ways to order the people. Well, since our seats are numbered, the number of ways to order the people is just the number of ways to order them on a line, which is just we have nine delegates, so nine factorial, but three delegates, each are from different country. So we have three delegates from A, so that over counts by three factorial. We have three delegates from B, that over counts by three factorial. And three delegates from C, over counting by another three factorial. And in this case, we're just assuming that the delegates are indistinguishable, that we're just, we just care about which, which, which countries they're from, not really like who they are. So we divide everything by three factorial, three factorial, three factorial. So this is the total number of ways to order them. Okay, so now we need to know the number of ways such that there exists at least uh, one case where three consecutive seats are from the same country. So in order to do this, we should use pi where the sets are a, all the a's being consecutive, all the b's being consecutive, and all the c's being consecutive. So in this case, pi with um, uh, three sets. So in order to find the probability, or in order to find the number of ways for at least one of those A, B, or C, three delegates all being consecutive, well, that's basically just the union of the number of ways for A to be consecutive, the number of ways for B to be consecutive, the number of ways for C to be consecutive. So we want to find the size of A union B union C. And this is exactly equal to, by using pi, A plus B, plus c minus, I'll put the minus down here, minus a intersection b 
minus B intersection C minus C intersection A plus A intersection B intersection C. Okay, so first uh, we should try to calculate A, the size of A, B, and C. So in order for three seats to be um, uh, to all be the same uh, people, we need to have, well, let's just first put them there. So we can choose either to have A, B, or C be the three, so which correspond to this, this number, this number, and this number, of course, respectively. So if A, if these are all A's, well, we can put them in any of the nine different orientations of the table. So we start with a multi, uh, factor of nine. And then after that, we can order the rest of the three delegates from B, three dele delegates from C in the six seats in six choose three ways, like so. So this is equal to the size of A. And note that the size of B and the size of C are actually the same thing because A, B, and C are perfectly symmetrical. So this part of the expression is equal to 3 times 9 times 6 choose 3. So this is the sum of the size of A, the size of B, and the size of C. So now on to the second part. So if we want to find the size of A intersection B, which means that uh, there's an three consecutive delegates from A and three consecutive delegates from, okay, wait, that was not a good drawing, three consecutive delegates from B, like so. How many ways are for this to happen? Well, first we can order A in, again, nine ways, any of the nine positions, and for B, well, we can order, in this case, for example, five, six, seven, or six, seven, eight, seven, eight, nine, or eight, nine, one, so there's four ways. And then finally, for the rest of the people, well, they're forced to sit in whatever seats are left. So it's 9 times 4. So, of course, A union B, or A intersection B, B intersection C, and C intersection A, they are all symmetrical. So each of them is equal to 9 times 4, which means that this part of the sum is equal to 3 times 9 times 4. Finally, we have the union, or the intersection of A, B, and C which means that all three countries are all sitting next to each other. And the number of ways to order this, well, again, we have A, let's A intersection B, intersection C. So the number of ways to order the A at the start is, of course, in the nine positions. And now for B and C, well, we can either have B be on the right and C be on the left, or we can have C be on the right and B be on the left. So that's two ways. So this part is equal to 9 times 2. So now we need to evaluate a union B, the size of a union B union C by evaluating these numbers. So 3 times 9 times 6 choose 3, which is equal to 20, minus 3 times 9 times 4, plus 9 times 2. OK, we can first factor out a 3 times 9 on these two terms to get 3 times 9 times 20 minus 4, which is 16, plus 9 times 2. We can factor out a 9 times 2 on both of these terms to get 9 times 2 times 3 times 8 plus 1, which is equal to 24 times plus 1 is 25. 25 times 2 is equal to 50, and 50 times 9 is equal to 450. So total number of ways in this case is 450. So now we have the total number of ways possible as 9 factorial over 3 factorial, 3 factorial, 3 factorial. So let's evaluate that as well. 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 all over 3 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 3 times 2. Cancel. Let's see more cancellation as well as some more cancellation to get 3 times 4 times 7 times 5 times 4. So the 5 times 4 is 20 times, let's multiply by 4 and 3. Let's multiply by 12 times 20, which is 240. So 240 is our subtotal, and we finally multiply 7, which is 
Let's see, that's equal to 168, I believe. Right, I didn't mess that up, right? 24, yeah, 168 plus a zero then. So 1,680 total ways. So our probability that at least one delegate six next to only delegates from the same country is 450 over 1680, which is equal to 45 over 168. Well, I could have left the 1680 in factored form as well as the 450 in factored form because there'd probably be some cancellation. So that's probably a better idea than to evaluate them individually. But anyways, you do that in the actual competition. Let's see, let's keep on simplifying. Let's see, is 15 over 56? Yeah, I think that's simplest form. So our probability that um, uh, at least one delegate sits next to only people from the same country is 15 over 56. But this is not the answer, of course, because we use complementary counting. We want to find the probability that every delegate sits next to at least one delegate from another country, which means that the probability we want is 1 minus this, which is just equal to 41 over 56. Let's see, this is in the form we want, m over n, so we want to find m plus n, which means that our answer is equal to 41 plus 56 is 97. And this is our final answer. Let's say we're going to be going over the inclusion, uh, inclusion, exclusion principle.